everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the Dig Four. I am Heather Mahalik, and with me today I have the Revolutionaries. They are made up of Susanna, John, and Chris. And I'm going to let you all introduce yourselves quickly to our audience. I am John Kirk. I'm a detective sergeant uh, with the Lake Jackson Police Department in Lake Jackson, Texas. I'm Susanna. Susanna Howard. I am the crime analyst at the West Jordan Police Department in Utah. Hey, my name is Chris Collins, also a detective sergeant with Lake Jackson Police Department in Texas. Great. Thank you all for joining. So I have a list of questions. If anyone wants to hear anything, please just type it into the chat. But my first one, it came down to the wire, honestly, on it was literally a nail biter where people were chiming in on Discord. Um, in the background, we were in our WhatsApp group chatting. How did it feel when you won? It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Very unexpected. For sure. Yeah, unexpected for sure. I remember early on, I think we cracked like top 50. And me and Chris, were most most of the time we spent in this office, he was at our Toledo machine and I was here. And when we cracked top 50, we were like, yo, top 50, that's great. <laughs> Never, never thought that uh, we'd end up getting that high up. That's amazing. So I find this interesting. Susanna joined first during our practice. And this is the first time she has ever seen you two. So how did you even form a team if you don't know each other? I signed up on Discord just at the perfect time where they were looking for a third person. And I was going to try and do it by myself. I'm so glad I didn't. And I saw them post about asking for another teammate and I debated and I thought, oh, do you want to add a crime analyst? And that's how it formed. <laughs> I love it. And John and Chris, you work together. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we're at the same department. We both we both do part of the digital investigations here as well. Oh, and I'm definitely, as you can see on Discord and on LinkedIn, I love the memes. I love making memes. So oh uh, do it all from the phone and yeah i made a revolutionary type poster for the team revolutionaries and several people inquired about joining and susanna she had the experience and we just kind of hit it off so that's how our team formed i love it and this is actually the first time i've seen them or talked to them we've, <laughs> yeah. we've communicated through discord the entire time so no and phone conversations at all no like no. nothing all wow even the one digital. time John wanted to have a phone call, I was getting my hair done, so we couldn't. Yeah, we tried once. I was trying to screen share to confirm <laughs> yeah. an answer, but that didn't even work out. I love it. So, John and Chris, have you played CTFs together before? No, neither really? one of us have played in any CTFs. I no, love this. This is our well, both of our first time. But he asked me what a week a week before, and uh. Yeah. I thought it was great because I got I got my Celebrate certifications middle to late last year. And um, I just thought it sounded like a good way to kind of knock the dust off and and get back into to analyzing because we'll probably the majority of our work is dumping um, outside agencies phones. So like, well, me personally, I didn't in the past year, I haven't um, like truly analyzed a ton of data just basically a lot of processing and giving the phones back and the reports back. So I thought, Hey, this is a great, a great way to kind of get back into working on analyzing these phones since I've been out of practice. So. Yeah. I love that. And I know there were a lot of new people that sent me messages directly on Twitter or discord saying, Hey, I don't work phones. I, this is, this is tough, but it is, it's a great way to get that experience. We have a live question coming in. So this is going a little bit off topic here but completely relevant. Paul is asking, what was your general strategy or approach to the question? So how as a team did you divide and conquer? We looked at, we had four extractions and three people um, and we just kind of dove into picking a person's device and going into it and working on as many questions as we could. And then once we hit a, a roadblock, either moving on to the next question or collaborating or uh, even moving on to a different device. Uh, there were several times that it became frustrating trying to find the answers, those flags. And it was just give up on it for now, put it on the back burner, move on to a different question or person. Yeah, unfortunately I chose Russell 
to start. <laughs> and I think I spent a good like eight hours trying to find a FaceTime phone call. That was great. <laughs> I already had Felix loaded and that was the only one. So that was an easy one for me. And I got lucky with the yeah. <laughs> some of the easier questions at the beginning. Yeah. Our, well, my approach was after I spent so much time trying to find the answer to that one question, it was very much just kind of like how I take tests. Like I look at it, I look for it for a little bit. If I get stuck or I don't really feel like I have any avenues on that question, I just went to a different one and worked on it. I need you to talk to my son, John, and teach him that strategy instead of like flipping out and quitting and <laughs> having a nervous breakdown. We have another comment in the chat about dolphins everywhere. Do you know that wasn't even a planned thing? That was completely random. Like that when I was in Miami with the Dolphin Street or whatever it was, all of that was random. So we did have a script. We obviously had a script on things we had to follow. Uh -huh. And then it was just do your thing with these devices. So even if you did OSINT and looked at where I was on my girl's trip, I didn't plan like, oh, I'm going to tag something and then this will be a question. So it's interesting how like all the natural <laughs> activity occurred. Um, Josh actually got mail for Russell to his house, physical mail. So wow. Russell is That's now awesome. believed to be a real <laughs> human. So I feel bad for you, John, that you drew Russell straw. That's yeah, funny. it was unfortunate. <laughs> All right, so here's a question. Well, just out of curiosity, how how many phones would you say you work like in a week, a month, a year, whatever you want to? I'm just curious on how familiar you are with phone forensic when you went into this. I know Chris is definitely more, has more experience. Um, like I said, I just got my certifications last year, so kind of been stepping into that. Um, Typically, like I said, the majority of stuff we do is just doing the extractions for other agencies. Okay. Unless they specifically ask for us to analyze the data, we just kind of give them the report and move on. Uh, like here recently, the last two weeks, I think I got six, six phones all at once for a homicide case, but I'm probably going to have to end up digging into the data because they're having some trouble finding it and they're like okay. an hour away. So them driving down here to get me to show them how to find a photo or whatever. So I'll probably end up doing analysis on that. But I would say, what do you think, Chris, in a year? I would say an average is about 100 phones a year. Okay. Oh, uh, and then of course, with doing a personal blog and research, I add to that uh, by doing test devices and testing methods, things like that. Awesome. What about you, Susanna? I would say probably uh, 150 to 200. That's one of my primary responsibilities at West Jordan. A lot of times I just do the extraction, do the reader and give it back to the detective to review. Um, but in some more major cases, I do a lot of the digging myself, nothing to the extent okay. of CTF, but. All right. So based upon that, did you learn anything? I learned like a ton. any new strategies or anything you want to share with people? Because one thing that I, I don't know if you noticed that when you signed up for the CTF, there was a survey that came with it. Just kind of like, what do you do? What's your experience? I am curious if these CTF attract newbies or those new to mobile forensics, because I think it's a great way to learn, even possibly more so than training or to enhance your training. I'm curious if you think you learned anything. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It, and the, the good thing about the CTF uh, in compared to real world experience there were questions on there that definitely had applications to real investigations. Some of them were a little bit, not I wouldn't say far-fetched, but for a challenge for the CTF on looking for artifacts that don't really apply to real-world experiences, but it makes it fun for the CTF. Oh, uh, like Sid, Sidception. Um, <laughs> And I, I learned that you can hide a BP list inside of a BP list. Inside <laughs> of a BP list. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it was, it was a lot of great questions that really challenged us. And I know it challenged everybody else. Great. That's good to hear. One of, the, one of the questions I get a lot is how to find deleted things. So I get from a detective that my suspect or victim or whoever's phone it is might've deleted. So it was a, Great experience, learning experience, trying to find um, some of these deleted artifacts and things that 
I didn't necessarily know how to look for it before. I love it. I love it. That's good to hear. And you know, sometimes like I saw in your blog post, the sans poster and things like that, like that is naturally where my mind goes. When I write questions, when we had the PC, for example, with Marsha, most of the things I was like, what are the hardest things that we teach in forensics 500 and what are the tools not going to parse? And that's where my question writing came from. But so you guys definitely tapped into my mindset with some of that. And for the record, the H is mean question was written by Jared. I didn't even write that. He was sitting here in my office and he's like, uh, how, how hard should this be? I'm like, awful. Be awful. <laughs> so Sid is not my fault. <laughs> like, that is all Jared. He came up with that nastiness. Okay. So I do have to ask, did you use PA ultra to work this yeah. at all? Yeah. Yeah. Primarily I would say. Okay. And what you can be brutally honest, what did you like, dislike? What helped? What could be improved? Um, I I utilized search a lot, obviously. Um, when she, well, first of all, I really like being able to open, like, because I could open all four extractions as cases, and so, like, from if I remember correctly, when you loaded in an extraction into previous versions, but like once you close that window like exit out of celebrate when you opened it, you had to re-ingest the extraction. So with ultra, as long as your case was already ingested, you open it up, and click on there. Sharon and it takes. Yeah. I call know, that like no more minute. crash and burn. Yeah. Like that was an awful yeah. feeling when you came back and your PC rebooted. I'm like, no, You're like, Oh no. no. Yeah. Yeah. That database indexing with ultra made it so much easier. Yeah. Um, and honestly, during this week of the CTF, we were, eating, sleeping, breathing CTF. So not only like, of course, I had a huge advantage with the machine uh, behind John there. Uh, it's loaded down with all the bells and whistles, but I was also working on it at home. So when opening up an extraction on my laptop that didn't have 256 gigs of RAM and dual processors and all that good stuff, it would take, if I was on PA7, it would take forever to open those extractions. Once we parsed it in Ultra, I was able to open those extractions in a few minutes on my laptop, which was Did nice. Did you just create the CLBEs and export and import them to your home laptop? Mm, just because of a learning curve, because this is the first time mm -hmm. I've used Ultra, did not realize that until about halfway through and speaking with either Paul or Josh uh, about it, didn't realize we could do that. But no, I didn't do that this time. So when I do fundamentals matter for ultra, I'll make sure I really stress that because it is such an important point. Yeah, I, I would say one thing I wish worked or was a thing like when you when you do your search and let's say I have Sharon and Felix open and I do a search, it'll drop down and show me Sharon instant messages and like a number of results. Yep. If I could click, click on just that instant messages. That would be that yes. would have been great josh and ian are you listening take notes <laughs> I, so. I believe that is something that is being added the whole advanced search wasn't fully functional in the version that we used for the ctf and that that is being worked on i i when i saw it wasn't available i assumed y'all just deactivated it on purpose yeah and eight seven <laughs> i think eight seven is available in the community portal if you wanted to try some of the updates there okay all right so let's also be honest what other tools helped you uh, App Genie, I used all the time, but um, we were only limited to five. Is that just something you did for CTF or uh, five apps to do App Genie? Where in um, Physical Analyzer, I could click all of them and do App Genie. So I just thought, was that a CTF thing? That may have been. Did you get the demo license? Uh, probably. It was on my uh, downloads when I logged into my portal on uh, Celebrate. I have the option okay. to download it. I'll actually, I'll have to check on that. And I know like for the app genie, we don't allow you to run it across every single thing. So if you compare it to like dynamic app finder where you can mm -hmm. run it against everything, it doesn't allow that to prevent crashing, but you oh, should okay. be able to do it more than once. But I think someone did find a bug that once app genie was run, it didn't let you run it again. Yes, that was, that good time that that was a bug. So that was detected. Yeah, that was the only thing. I ran and into Josh an issue. Josh is chatting right now. He said App Genie is limited to five for performance reasons. So five at okay. a time, at not a time. five total. Yeah. 
Thank you, Josh. <laughs> I just had a laptop I carried back and forth from home to work and back. Uh, but I was using an external hard drive that was encoded and password protected. So I ran into some issues using that as my database source. But yeah, I like to do the all the examination tools the first time I log in, media classification, carving. So I don't have to redo it once the app's open. So again, the database Thanks. made that so much easier to reopen when I did um, crash. So that was awesome. And I loved the database. The database was really neat uh, synopsis of uh, everything that you're going to about to look at. So Good. Um, I really love that tool. What about any, how, did you leverage any of the leaps like oh, Alexis and the oh, team, yeah. like all the Absolutely. leaps? Have you ever tried Artex, Ian Wiffen's tool? I, I have not, no. It's amazing. I definitely recommend It's also open source, completely free. If you go to double black and I think it's L A K like I double black. So. If you look up yeah. um, Artex, Ian Wiffen, it's just iOS, but it's Artifact Examiner. It's brilliant. It's simply brilliant. It's a fantastic resource as an add-on. Um, and I know you blogged, so thank you for your blog. If you are listening and you have not reviewed their blog, you can also find it. I'll make sure we link it to this episode. But I also tweeted it. It's on LinkedIn. So you can read what the revolutionaries did and how they solved each thing. And I think it's fantastic to see other ways versus what Josh and I release saying, here's all the answers, because it's super important. All right, another question. And actually, did you, this is your first Celebrate CTF, right? Yes. Okay. First so, CTF, yeah. Yeah, first CTF period. Really? That's awesome. Yeah. So we used to do three days. You have just three days to work this. This year, we extended it to a week because some people needed the weekend or they needed additional time. You think you would have had the same experience if it were simply three days? I, I think I would have had three days of no sleep. <laughs> right. Yeah, three days oh, seems yeah. a sure. lot a lot more stress. Yeah. yeah. We were around seventh place, I think, at the three day mark. <laughs> seventh okay. or tenth place. <laughs> I don't yeah. know when we broke the top ten. So, so I'm not sure we would have made anything for you. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it was nice being able to somewhat balance work with the CTF because, I mean, day-to-day -day operations don't stop. So it yeah. was fitting in a question here and there where in three days we wouldn't have had that opportunity to work out the full CTF. That's yeah, great. We, having the weekend. Yeah, a lot. I'm sure Suzanne as well, me and Chris, we still have 20-plus other actual cases right. to try to balance, but in three days I don't. The seven days was nice. I liked it, and I, I definitely liked the, the start in the middle of the week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you had did some time to work during the week, and then you had, like, a whole weekend. Uh, I liked it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And then here's another question. Since this was your first one, what, what made you decide I'm going for it this time? John, you kind of said you wanted to, like, reinforce your training. Yeah. I just, Chris and Susanna, what about you? What made you decide, like, let's do this? I I saw the post, and I've been wanting to do a CTF, and I saw this one was from Celebrite. We use Celebrite tools at our department, and it was for phone extractions. And I love phone extractions and phone forensics, so I said, you know what? Sign me up. And that's when that snowball started. <laughs> <laughs> I it sounded it. fun, honestly, uh, from the emails and the marketing we got. Um, I, uh, but my ultimate goal was learning. I just, I love a good scavenger hunt. I love a good puzzle, but it, it, my goal was to learn a lot more and learn how to dig in. And um, so, but for both the fun and the learning. <laughs> I love it. Love it. All right. My final question for each of you, if you could give advice to anyone who maybe new to the CTF process, similar to yourselves last year before you joined this one, new to forensics, has no mobile experience. Do you recommend that they try it by themselves? Do you recommend that they join a team? I think Discord was such a good idea for us to like use as a chat platform because it did, the conversation was great and it was a lot of things that were there. So what would you recommend to people? Highly recommend a team. I uh, was going to do it by myself. I don't think I would have joined a team if I didn't see uh, Chris's post on Discord, but it would have been a lot less stressful and I would not have learned as much. 
I think we were a good um, combination because I just dug into all the databases and they had a lot of more technical uh, skill uh, in computer forensics. So I would not have learned as much, um, but there's nothing to lose to just give it a shot and try it. So highly recommend. Yeah, I, I would that. I would say join a team for sure. Um, the different approaches that people have would definitely it makes it a lot easier in my mind than if you're just by yourself. Because like if I feel like if I was by myself, I'd probably still be looking for a FaceTime phone call at this point. <laughs> but definitely, because we we would have like um, Chris was looking for Sid for twelve hours. And then being able to be like, hey, I'm going to move on to this question if you want to look at Sid. We did that in Discord. So I don't know how many times. Hey, I'm, I'm stuck here. I'm going to move on if somebody wants to look at this. This is what I have so far. Or, and even the ability to get a second or third pair of eyes on an answer. So we, several times, I think, hey, I think this is the answer to the question. Here's a screenshot. What do you all think? And multiple times, that wasn't the answer. But that screenshot may have helped somebody else be like, actually, I found, I think this is the answer. So being able to collaborate like that, is, I think it's, it's way better than trying it solo. But if you're solo, just try it. It'd be fun. Yeah, yeah I'd have to echo that with, with the, the team support was nice. Uh, another tip for anybody getting in a CTF and even phone forensics, uh, digital forensics at all, is, is use your resources. Uh, A-Leap, I-Leap. Uh, what you're talking about, uh, Ian Whiffen's tool, the SANS posters, don't be limited to a single tool. Uh, there's several tools out there that can be used. Uh, while this was a Celebrate competition, uh, definitely think about it because obviously the Celebrate tools were used to create those questions, but there's definitely more than one approach to each question and finding those solutions. So don't hinder yourself with a single tool. I completely agree. And you know, on that note, Josh and I released the list of all the questions because some people ask with training departments or even training new law enforcement, new people in their labs. We provided all the questions. <clears throat> NIST will always host the data sets now. People can take those and use them for training. Ian is working on a gaming server is going to have all the questions in it that stays open indefinitely where you can actually get scores and see how you're doing and it will do the unlocking of next questions oh, so we're wow. hoping that once we run a ctf competition it can stay open forever for anyone that wants to keep learning or even if you hire new people it's also something you could do as a job interview technique like hey can you answer these five simple questions like get five ten pointers or something so we yeah. want everyone to keep learning but congratulations to you all. You did a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. It was fun to watch you. There's some comments in the chat congratulating you, talking about your memes on Discord, like <laughs> all the things that were so fun. We appreciate the spirit behind your team. It was definitely a great one. So thank you all for being on the show. I hope you play again next year. Oh, we we definitely hope you do. For sure. Thank you. Thanks. And thank Thanks you for everyone that's listening to the Dig 4. Remember, what you are looking for may not be on the surface. Sometimes you have to dig for it.